reading from the Gospel of Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, the kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle, because the harvest has come. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. Today's gospel starts with this parable. The kingdom of God is compared to seed that grows, we know not how, and eventually becomes full grain, ready to be harvested. The second parable is similar. A tiny seed, the mustard seed, mysteriously grows into a huge bush, not typical of mustard, and it is large enough for the birds of the air to come and roost in its branches. The growth of Christianity certainly seemed to have followed this pattern. From a group of 12 men following Jesus, along with a number of women whom history has largely forgotten, it has spread to become one of the world's great religions. Who could have expected such great results from such a small beginning, a carpenter's son in an obscure town, Nazareth? I would like to reflect on a couple of particular aspects of this parable. The seed grows, and no one knows how. It grows in secret. Likewise, the mustard seed mysteriously grows from something tiny to something very large, and this is unexpected. As a retired physician, the growth reminds me of the growth of an embryo in the womb. This growth has been the subject of a lot of attention since Roe v. Wade was overturned, but that's not what I wish to focus on. Although we have come far in terms of in vitro fertilization and other fertility treatments, we have not been able to make a fetus grow, as it were, from scratch. We can unite sperm and egg, create an environment that favors the development of the zygote, then blastocyst, the precursor of the embryo, in their initial stages. But then we need a human womb. We have not yet developed a mechanical or human-created womb. Similarly, we cannot yet make an egg or a spermatozoan from the elements, from atoms. We know what DNA is made of, and we can manipulate genes, and we have even manufactured individual genes, but we have not been able to create enough DNA or package it so that it will develop into a human being. The growth of human beings and other living things is still largely a secret. In our communities, in the church, in our ministries, we can't necessarily say what will make our groups grow in numbers or in wisdom and good works. We can try things and see what happens, but there are always surprises. Sometimes the smallest things lead to great results. Leaders arise from unexpected places. And sometimes the world creates environments that are favorable or unfavorable for growth. We control none of these things. 
Jesus says the growth is out of our control. It is a mystery. Often what causes a person to commit to Jesus or to a given ministry is also a mystery. So many variables combine that it is hard or impossible to state cause and effect. Another thing this parable reminds me of that happens in secret is healing. Here again, we know in medicine how to create environments that are favorable to healing. We stitch cuts together, cast or surgically support broken bones, graft skin, bone, and other tissues. But then the healing happens over time. We can't force it or do much to speed it up. It's not like Star Trek, where they have laser-like things to heal lacerations and broken bones in minutes. Healing and growth are similar. They both involve new tissues being made. In one case, to bridge a place where a wound was created. In the other, to add on to what is already present, multiplying cells to cause development and an increase in size. In the human body and in the church, they usually take place mysteriously, quietly. We can create environments that welcome people no matter who they are. We can show love to everybody. We can make room for each person to share their gifts. We can work alongside each other. These things are like sowing seeds. But we can't make people come. We can't make them do good works better. Those things are the growth that happens mysteriously. When it comes to healing, we can listen to each other's stories, stories of pain and stories of injury. We can pray for each other. We can offer love and acceptance, but we can't make someone's pain go away. We can't make them, sorry, we can't make them feel whole again. Those things happen inside the soul. We know not how. God is all about growth and healing. The mystery of the growth of the kingdom of God and the home it makes for many is a mystery to rejoice in. We are not in control of healing or growth, but we are workers in the garden of God's kingdom, doing the best we can. Then we trust in God to bring the increase, the growth, and to make a home for all kinds of souls little different souls like the birds of the air with their variety of color and song. Amen. <laughs>